It's taken three seasons, but the Buffalo Bills are back in the playoffs. Whether or not we have a realistic chance at winning, despite winning our division, is another question, but at the very least, it's mission accomplished in the sense that we are here. Of course, looking at the squad in general, not the strongest. Looking as well at the injuries that we're currently uh, currently dealing with, it doesn't help the issue. If we're able to make it past the wild card round, though, Jordan Poyer will be back, Ellis Hollier will be back, and JJ Nelson's still going to be out unless we make it relatively far. Our chances go up the further we make it into the postseason, but Houston is going to provide an interesting challenge, at least I would assume. We're going to take a look at their roster before jumping into this. With this being a playoff episode, the plan is pretty much to just go for as long as we can. Hopefully, we're not one and done in terms of gameplay. Uh, well, you know, at least checking or keeping an eye on the gameplay. Deshaun Watson still their quarterback at an 86 overall. Lamar Miller at an 83. Amir Abdullah as well, also at an 83. Uh, Kaywane Steele, hell of a name. DeAndre Hopkins is still there at an 87. Will Fuller, and then from there, it, it drops a little bit, but that's not to say that uh, that Cootie and Treadwell are that bad. Tight end wise, Deion Sims. We actually have a, a decent little advantage in terms of the tight end comparison. And that could be where we end up winning. Martinez Rankin, their starting left tackle, a 68. Hansen is hurt, their, uh, their rookie left tackle. At a 73. So we have an opportunity there. They have Carter Trueblood, uh, Trueblood at left guard. Nick Martin at center. Zach Fulton and Don Douglas. So really, really there's there's a weakness to be exploited there. If our, if our defensive line, if the pressure that we can bring, the talent we have on the defensive side of the ball, if they can get to Watson, we have a chance to make the most of this. On the flip side, though, uh, J.J. Watt still there, still a 92. Dre Doggins is there, a rookie out of Pittsburgh at a 78. Uh, D.J. Reader is there, Malik McDowell as well. It's still a good team defensively. They're looking pretty solid. Bit of a weakness there. That outside linebacker, the cornerback core, also not tremendous. Honey Badger still there as well as Andre Hal. Okay, so we have a decent shot, I would say. I'm not overly intimidated heading in to this game am i am i thinking we're gonna win no admittedly not but we could and it's nice to have that little bit of optimism as we get into this of course josh allen had a pretty damn good season even if he hasn't developed and of course that will continue to be a debate as far as how we handle that with me handling training or not and in a way, like I said, as we have a one overall point advantage here, in a way, like I've said, um, I kind of like just leaving it up to the AI. Because in a way, not every player with good potential actually ends up developing. And sure, it kind of sucks that Josh Allen hasn't exactly developed and, you know, hasn't hit like the mid or even the low 80s yet in terms of overall. But I have had quarterbacks develop. So, I don't know. We could certainly help influence that, but I don't mind the randomness uh, that's coming out of it, but that is a topic of discussion for a different day, yet again, because right now Josh Allen is leading the way again, 28 touchdowns, 8 picks this season, over 4,600 yards, he had himself a very strong season, it's just now whether or not he can get it done here in the postseason, we are hosting Houston in the wild card round, let's see what we can do, there's really no special intro or anything, in the snow, by the way, in the snow. Let's do this. We start off with the opening possession. We will sim to the end of the first quarter, as we always do. Who will take the early lead? And the answer to that question uh, has not yet been answered. A scoreless first quarter. We have the ball here at their 25, though, to begin the second. A good chance to get on the board here. And we do with the opening seven points. Unfortunately, Houston battles right back. With 10 unanswered points, make it 17 unanswered points for Houston as they have that 17-7 lead at halftime. That is unfortunate. It was a four-yard touchdown pass to Zay Jones, and then from there, we just fell apart. A 13-yard touchdown pass to Lamar Miller, and they just kept up the pressure from there. We're in a tad bit of trouble. We need a strong third quarter here, especially from the defense. 20-7. 
And they will start off the fourth quarter on the six-yard line. It's not looking good. Touchdown. Deion Sims. The two-point conversion fails. It's 26-7. to At basically the start of the fourth quarter. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. All right. Can the team find success on this drive? We need to get back into this game. We need to get back into it quickly. A 10-yard reception for Calvin Benjamin. Seven yards for Ebron. Solid. The defense really let us down in this game. As BJ Moyer, who we picked up off of the Dolphins practice squad, ends up going down injured. So that's great. It's a solid drive here. That penalty really helped. Four yards for Bryce Love. Can we score here? We really need two. And there we go. Okay, we're not totally out of it. The touchdown for Ebron. 26-14. Still with 12 and a half to go, we have a chance. We're not completely out of this just yet. We need the defense now, though, to really show up and get the job done. Eight yards for Fuller. Third and four. 15-yard penalty against Trent Murphy. That's unfortunate. We had a chance to stop them. That could come back to haunt us as Deshaun Watson is just shredding our defense right now. He and Lamar Miller, we can't get a stop. Which really, if you look at our team, and well, there we go, actually, we do end up getting a stop. They are in field goal range. 50-yarder for Santos is good. 15-point lead now for Houston, which is pretty disastrous for us. If you looked at this team on paper, you would have said our defense was the bright point, And they've really let us down in this game. We're not yet out of it, though. 8.47 to go. We need another quick drive. Hopefully we can find some success. J.J. Watt gets to Josh Allen, third and ten. And this could be the game right here. Fourth and ten, we do end up punting, but that was worst case scenario, I would say. Fifteen point lead with seven and a half to go. They're starting on their own 45. We need a turnover. We need a quick stop. That is not going to help. Jesus. Our defense just has not shown up today. Second and ten, Ryan Shazier. There we go. There we go. That is exactly what we needed. The interception will start on the 44. Can we get back into this? That is what we needed. This is the opportunity, the opening that we had to create for ourselves. There we go. A 12-yard reception for Nkang. Nine-yard penalty on Justin Reed. Must have been pass interference, I would imagine. Here we go. Come on. On the 10. Seven yards for Bryce Love. Can we do this? 3.50 to go. It's first and goal on the 2. Houston uh, with the first turnover in this game for either side. And it could lead to us having a second chance. Here's Quadarius Fields. He's going to be short. He's going to be short. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Again, the real downside here is the fact that it's a 15-point game. Weekly game boost. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. I don't care. I don't care. Just go away. Come on. We need this. On the one. We need to score quickly. Oh, God, we need to score quickly. It is a two-possession game still. Second goal. Allen's going to throw. And it's nearly picked off. Third and goal. 3.03 remaining. It was looking so good. And now we're struggling. 29-14. Third and goal from the one. Here we go. Come on. We need this. We need this, and then the defense has to show up again. Hand off to Bryce Love. He's going to be stopped. And Houston is one play away from a goal line stand to seal the deal. What an absolute disaster this has been. Two stops on the run, and then an incomplete pass on second. Down. Just wow. Wow. This is... This is it. Fourth and goal from the two. Granted, we'll have tremendous, uh, a tremendous opportunity to force a safety if need be, but here we go. Fake handoff. Allen is sacked at the 18. There goes that tremendous field position. Houston with a successful goal line stand, and you can't stop the Bills from doing what they do in the playoffs, can you? What the hell was that? I just... 
Oh my god. It was going so well. And then we jump in to hopefully see the successful play. <sighs> wow. We're pretty much done for. We're pretty much screwed. Allen getting sacked for a loss of 15. That's going to be what seals the deal there. Three-yard rush for Miller. Somehow the clock went down to 133, despite the two-minute warning being a factor. Five yards for Freeman. We'll force the punt. We need to score immediately, and then it's going to take an onside kick at this point. Wow. Let's go change of possession. Here we go. Four-yard reception for Zay Jones. Yeah, we're done. We are done. The defense lets us down. The red zone offense lets us down. The Bills return to the playoffs. And in a very winnable game against Houston, completely waste the opportunity. That's the only way to look at it. We completely wasted the opportunity. 17 unanswered points in the second quarter. And then just numerous wasted opportunities down the stretch. 29 to 14. Just embarrassing. Just look at the look at the difference in total yardage. Like, my God. <sighs> what a disappointing game. I, I don't I don't even know if I care to look at the stats. I don't. I just, if anything, want to pretend that this season never happened. Allen, 19 of 32, 185 yards with two touchdowns. And Bryce Love had 92 yards. But just god damn. God damn, I just, I don't know. I don't know how our defense gets shredded to that extent. Like, they had weapons on offense, but how Deshaun Watson was allowed any time whatsoever with their offensive line being that weak and arguably worse than our offensive line, which is difficult to do, by the way. I don't, I don't get it. Our defense, the foundation of this team, completely let us down. That's the only way to view it. We did pick up an injury as well. This would have been the offensive lineman, correct? It is. Moyer, broken collarbone. Neat. Neat. Well, the good thing is the season's over with. He's going to be cut anyway. <sighs> that is that is just depressing. That is That is just a depressing way to end a season. There is no other way to view it. How else... <laughs> How else are you supposed to view that, you know? We had a chance to win that game, and the team just completely collapsed. Wow. Oh, no Jordan Poyer. <laughs> no Holier. At least Winters is back, but goddamn, weekly awards. I mean, who gives a flying piece of monkey trash? Oh, I don't even know what the hell that means. What, what would be a piece of monkey trash? Like a banana peel, I guess? I don't know. Let's move on, damn it. Let's move on. What a, what a punch to the gut that is. Like I said, I felt like that was a winnable game. I didn't expect us to win, but that was that was a winnable game. I at least didn't expect our defense to be as poor as it was. I don't know. Maybe I should have. But I didn't expect our defense to be as bad as they were. McDermott should have points, and he does. So the big thing here, of course, will be player progression, uh, which we can't yet afford the quarterback training boost. In terms of re-sign influence or retirement influence, I'm not too concerned. We have the expert scouting and master negotiator. So really it's just the scouting. And, I mean, I think one way or another we need to save up to get the quarterback boost. I mean, the O-line boost would be nice. Numerous uh, boosts here would be nice. Hopefully we get them in time. Or hopefully we can just find a better coach than McDermott who has the boost beyond. But for now, we're all right. To the Pro Bowl we go. It's Houston and Atlanta in the Super Bowl. Which is fucking mind-boggling to me. Matt Ryan and Baker Mayfield starting. Le'Veon Bell and Shaquan Barkley. Bryce Love actually made the Pro Bowl. So that's, that's promising. Quadarius Fields made it as the second fullback option. Did we have anybody else? Sims made it from Houston. Makes me wonder, do we have anybody else? It's pretty much all I'm paying attention to right now is whether or not we had any other representatives. Uh, Dante Fowler Jr. is going to make it. 
as the starting right end. Murphy's going to make it as the third defensive tackle. Gardner Johnson makes it as the starting right outside linebacker. So we, you know, Micah Hyde also makes it. We had, we had some representatives in the Pro Bowl, which is nice. Again, it's a sign of development. How the hell Houston made it to the Super Bowl, I, I don't understand. I really don't. I don't view them as that good of a team. Like, there's just no way with that offensive line that that should have happened. Uh, New England beat Kansas City 35-17. Seattle beat Philly 34-21. We lost to Houston and Green Bay beat New Orleans 34-7. In the divisional matchup, Jacksonville beat New England 20-17. Rip. Atlanta beat Green Bay 31-14. Houston beat Cleveland 37-27. And the Giants beat the Seahawks 24-10 in the conference championship. Houston beat Jacksonville 24-21. Atlanta beat New York 35-17. And thus, a Houston Atlanta Super Bowl. That is how we got there. For now, uh, we have some scouting to worry about. I will probably go through the draft in this episode, maybe. I might save it for the next one, and we might just worry about free agency. Uh, we were on linebackers, so let's see what we got here. Try to scout everybody through the first three rounds. We'll handle it in that manner, and it is looking like a decent draft. Four linebackers, so that's... Oh, boy. Oglesby, I should have stopped, but what are you going to do? V Villami Richardson. Hell of a name. Hell of a name. Let's see. Place your bets. Houston or Atlanta? I'm going Atlanta. Just, I mean, granted, would I feel better about losing to the eventual winner? That's the question. Don't have to worry about it, though, because Atlanta wins the Super Bowl 54, 28-21 over Houston. So there you go. The Falcons finally win the big one. Do I want to look at their team? Sure, why not? Let's see what a Super Bowl winning team looks like, shall we? Quarterback, Matt Ryan's still there. Matt Ryan at 36 wins the Super Bowl. Uh, Devonta Freeman's still there at a 93. Julio Jones, Calvin Ridley, Ricardo Persson as well, who was in, oh God, excuse me, who was injured. Austin Hooper. Uh, the offensive line is what you would expect in a way. Aldridge is a bit of a weak link. Alfred's also a bit of a weak link, but certainly some game changers there. Defensive line is crazy. Linebacker core is crazy outside of Duke Riley. Corners, I mean, Desmond Trufant's there. It's a little bit weak you know, from there, but it was good enough. And then Allen and Keanu Neal. Yeah, I mean, they, they have their weaknesses, but I can see why they won and that brings us to contract negotiations here. Malik Collins, you were signed as a depth option at defensive tackle. Technically, you are our second best one, but I'm going to let go of you for now just to see who else is available, more than likely. In your 26 normal development, you're actually somewhat close to leveling up. But, yeah, for a depth option, I can find somebody else, hopefully. Maybe even somebody better so we don't have to take a defensive tackle in the draft. Uh, J.J. Nelson, same thing. We'll find somebody else, especially with the, uh, you know, with the core that we already have there. So we'll let go of J.J. Nelson for the moment as well. Moyer can go. Paxson can go. Pretty much all these guys were signed, uh, aside from Quadarius, uh, Quadarius Fields at fullback. Who will look to bring back? Uh, that's not a terrible cap hit. Why not bring you back for now? Uh, McDell can go... Pretty much all these normal development guys, you know, the players that we ended up bringing in as depth options, they can all go. Uh, Blake Peck, that's a tough one. I'm going to let him go for now, too. Kayvon Webster down to a 78. He's gone. Uh, Matt Milano and Zay Jones. I think I'm going to let go of everybody, and we'll see who's available. I think that's the way we'll handle it. We'll save some money here. Uh, Zay Jones is the one that I'm really tempted to bring back, but we don't know what the free agency uh, situation is going to look like. So we'll try to make the most of this. Uh, which, in fairness, again, now without uh, without those guys being re-signed, we still have Keelan Cole. Kelvin Benjamin's actually dropped off in a big-time way. He's still one of our better options. But, yeah, we're going to need to look to make a move and maybe even trading Kelvin Benjamin now just to get rid of him might be the right way to go. Uh, we're going to need help at wide receiver. So, free agency-wise, we'll definitely look to splash some cash. Let's see what we can do. Quite a few guys ended up progressing, which is actually unfortunate. Uh, $44 million. 
in space. And Kareem Hunt's available. We'll start off at quarterback, though. Big Ben at 39, still kicking around. Blake Bortles is there as well, which, you know, I mean, technically, we could bring in a Blake Bortles, but we'll, we'll stick with Josh Allen for obvious reasons. If we're going if we're going to replace Josh Allen, it's going to be with a quarterback out of the draft who can be a true difference maker. Blake Bortles would just be a stopgap. Uh, Mitch Trubisky, Brissett, yeah, I mean, there's not going to be anybody here. Rutherford, who is actually the Patriots quarterback, once Brady left, but yeah, he hasn't developed either. So yeah, nothing there. Running back wise, holy shit. Okay, so here's the thing. Bryce Love is a great running back, right? He is. Young running back, but my God. Bringing in a Kareem Hunt or a Christian McCaffrey to replace him, and then we move Bryce Love to get help elsewhere. That could be worth it. Uh, a Kareem Hunt top offer right now would have to be 95 points. And how much would a $42 million offer be? That would be 95. That's that's not bad at all. Are you kidding me? Like under $7 million just in general. That is ridiculous. So a $43 million offer would be 97 points. That is cheap. And then Christian McCaffrey... Let's see, what would that be in fairness? We, we could negotiate with him. Uh, that would be the only offer out there. So really, we could kind of somewhat look to lowball. Maybe. Might not be the smartest idea, but we could bring in Hunt or McCaffrey. Which, again, might not be the worst way to go. I know we have Bryce Love already, but we could take that next step ahead. I mean, Hunt's only two years older, McCaffrey's a year older, so Bryce Love isn't going to hit that level. If someone of that caliber becomes available and we can afford them, why not go for them, you know? James Devlin, Nix, is there a younger guy who's better than Fields? I think the answer is going to be no, at least in terms of development. So, Quadarius Fields, I'm really struggling with that name, will continue to be our fullback heading into next year, unless Ben Good is half decent. He's not, funny enough. Wide receiver-wise, Cooper Cup is available. 97-point offer from Jacksonville. Chris Godwin's there. Kenny Galladay. No major game changers at wideout. Uh, no offers yet on Zay Jones, by the way. Could argue Cooper Cup should be the main target just to have a solid three. A little bit worried about him being 28. Godwin as a younger option might be the better way to go. We'd have to outbid the Rams. We'll come back to wide receiver. At tight end, okay, so here, here's the thing, right? Maybe it's just the Patriots fan in me. And I know, controversial to bring up the, the guy for obvious reasons, because the fact that he was a good football player doesn't mean shit when you look at the person he was. But maybe it's the Patriots fan in me, but I've seen what certain teams can do when you have uh, multiple dominant tight ends. And I can't help but think that an Ebron and Njaku pairing would be simply outrageous. Might not be the smartest way to spend the money, but holy shit, would it be fun. Not to mention Holier being there, which, I mean, I could move him back to wide receiver if I really wanted to. I'm tempted. Wide receiver and tight end will come back. Uh, left tackle Trent Williams. Now, he wouldn't necessarily have to outright replace Grant Stemke. But at 33, a one-year deal for Williams might not be the worst idea. Nobody at left guard. I imagine Barry, as in Blueberry, not Barry. Okay. Center, Jason Kelsey's also there. Okay, we we could spend some good money here in a lot of different ways. I I almost just want the go ahead from you guys though to be overly ridiculous about this. And what I mean by that is you look at what we could do here, right? You look at the two running backs. You look at bringing in a Cooper Cup or a Chris Godwin. You look at potentially bringing in a David and Jaku. Uh, you know what? Here, for example, let me just send out offers that we would entertain, and we'll see what the cap situation ends up looking like, right? We'll handle it that way. So, Cooper Cup, if we wanted to get involved here, a four-year deal's not terrible for you. What would this be offer-wise? 97 points. All right, I'd want to up that one more. So, let's just explore the idea of offering pretty much every big name a contract here. 
It's kind of what we're exploring. 101 point offer there for Cup. Chris Godwin, I would also consider normal development. I'd consider him a little bit further along than Zay Jones, right? Just consider him, even though he's a deep threat, he's also pretty good possession-wise. Like, we'd consider him the outright Zay Jones improvement and replacement. Uh, and then Kenny Galladay is there as well at an 80. I don't think we'd target him unless Cup and Godwin uh, ended up declining. So I think we'd be good there. And Jaku, what would you be looking for? Because as it stands, we still have a ton of money to spend, even if we were to send this out. So, a decent offer for you. Let's see, 27.8, 95-point offer. I'd still have to up that a little bit to outbid Jacksonville. And needless to say, I'm a little bit scared of the Jaguars improving and getting David and Jaku, <laughs> as if they, you know, as if they need the help. Uh, so left tackle again. The thought of bringing in Trent Williams for like a year or two is kind of nice we'd uh, we'd get what we'd pay for but in that way josh allen wouldn't get ripped to shreds so that would be cool not having josh allen get ripped to shreds right i'm sure he's down for that idea uh but let's see here if we were to bump this up just a tad bit and of course i still have both offers up for mccaffrey and hunt of which i could remove one of them and we'd actually be looking okay and again this has only been this has only been offensive changes. And then it was uh, at center, Jason Kelsey. If we really wanted to improve the O-line. So let's see. And, okay, that would be the cutoff point for the cap. So in terms of in terms of running backs, right, I think ideally it would probably be Kareem Hunt scheme fit right now. Not that we couldn't change it up for McCaffrey. But, I mean, it's Kareem Hunt. He's not going to get any better at this point. McCaffrey also isn't going to get any better at this point. Uh, ninth ranked running back for McCaffrey. Hunt must be top five, right? Seventh. Seventh. But it is Kareem Hunt, and it's uh, intriguing to me, the thought of bringing him onto this team again as a scheme fit. Uh, you could argue either or. So let's just say, for now, we remove the offer from McCaffrey. That would give us $8 million. And from here, let's just say we remove the offer. <sighs> Who would I prefer? i got to be honest. Cup or Godwin? Eh, Cooper Cup's a little bit better. Let's just say we were to stick with him, right? So that would be $15 million. If we were to bring in Hunt, Cooper Cup, and Jocko at tight end, Williams, uh, Jason Kelsey, we'd now have to send this offer out. Now, I know he has a massive offer from the Rams. I saw that. So this could... Uh, this could be expensive, 103 points. This could end up being just a tad bit expensive, but worth it in a way that, you know, Josh Allen wouldn't get, again, destroyed every Sunday. So that's a 102-point offer. Still not that bad of a deal for a still solid offensive lineman. Under $8 million for a cap hit, 106 points to outbid them. Right, left end, Campbell at 35, no need. We have Joe Jackson, that's not necessary. Plus, I mean, Jesus Christ, look at the offer from both Miami and Washington. Yeah, that's a good idea, Washington. Remember what happens the last, remember what happened the last time you spent big on a defensive lineman? Good call. Uh, Willie Henry we wouldn't need. Hendrickson we wouldn't need. Uh, Dentari Poe, not quite. Ooh, Murphy regressed too. Not quite the big name I was thinking of. Him or Darius for that matter. And again, Malik Collins is there at 26. We're going to need help at defensive tackle. Like, that's going to be our priority in the draft. Because I think ideally, getting rid of Trent Murphy now would be the right way to handle this. Like, we get rid of him now and just try to find a replacement in the draft. Because again, Poe and Darius are the top two options. Or Malik Collins. We're going to need help there. And to be honest, the thought of... I mean, we have Jackson. We have Jackson, we have Murphy, we have Fowler Jr. and Lawson. In fairness, we kind of already have a replacement. We do have Shaq Lawson, and we can just move him over to defensive tackle. Uh, Jonathan Allen, though, is also available, as is Derek Barnett. So that could be where the replacements come in from. Campbell's not going to happen. Poe's not that great. Jonathan Allen, still normal development at 26. And Barnett has normal development at 25. So, I mean, you know, 100-point offer for Barnett. The cheaper option would be Jonathan Allen. 
just for an example here. So what would that be? 95 points. Obviously, we could reduce that offer by quite a bit. Again, I'm just trying to get a look at the grand scheme of everything here for if we were to just sit here and spend all the goddamn money, what would it look like? And I could actually still reduce this offer ever so slightly. 77 point offer there. Uh, Donta Hightower at outside linebacker. I mean, we have Tremaine Edmonds, so we're good. Middle linebacker Perryman. We do need another middle linebacker. Uh, I don't know if Perryman's going to be the guy. I mean, we could, but I mean, we're not going to compete with these offers. So, middle linebacker out of the draft might not be the worst idea. Although, this 24 year old Raekwon McMillan. Normal development. Yeah, no thanks. No thanks. And then Oliver Vernon. I mean, we have Gardner Johnson. Of course, we let go of Matt Milano as a depth option. Uh, we could still look to get help there. Patrick Peterson available at corner. And this is where it gets interesting. Because the talk of moving someone maybe over to safety. Of course, safety, we're still good. Uh, Jordan Poyer, still set up. Hyde, still amazing. Jabril Peppers, how good are you at this point? Because, if, again, if you watch the Lions run on Twitch, which I've mentioned before, uh, Peppers turned into a monster for us for the most part. So corner would pretty much be the last big move. And then Harrison Bucker. I wish. He hasn't turned into as uh, big of a monster as Elliot. Another guy from the Lions run. And then punter-wise, Rigoberto Sanchez, Townsend. Yeah, we wouldn't have to worry about anything else there, I wouldn't imagine. Silvers, normal developments. Yeah, we could find another punter elsewhere. We do need an upgrade because Blackburn just hasn't improved whatsoever. So if we were to sit here... If we were to sit here and be like, okay, let's spend a shitload of money. Technically, we could throw our name into the hat for Kareem Hunt and Jaku, Williams, Kelsey, Cooper Cup, or Godwin, and Jonathan Allen. Uh, Jonathan Allen would be brought in to help shore up the defense if we wanted to free up the space for Trent Williams. And then you could also uh, still look at bringing in Patrick Peterson, a Desmond King, or even a Jordan Lewis. Uh, which, I mean, Patrick Peterson has a hell of an offer right now, but you want to talk about a, another game changer. Imagine White, Peterson, and Artie Burns. God damn. Like, our secondary should never struggle again, ever. It should be shut down week in and week out. I just don't know how crazy I want to go with this, but there's a clear outline where we could just sit here and make major, major moves. And set up this team in a much better way. It's just whether or not people find that cheap. I mean, granted, there's no guarantees that this would work out. I mean, I'm sure we won't get the majority of these players. But in the off chance that we somehow do, obviously the team would change in a major way. Uh, Bryce Love, hell, we could keep <laughs> if we really wanted to. He's not that expensive. We could keep him as a third down back even. Uh, wide receiver-wise, again... Now might be the right time to move on from a Calvin Benjamin, but we could keep him for the moment. Wide receiver core is going to need a little bit of work. Uh, again, if we brought in Njaku, which would be overkill, but if we did, my God, the depth that we would have at tight end would be phenomenal. And then, of course, talking about the O-line help that we could look to bring in, which is desperately needed. Uh, Murphy's not that expensive, so moving him out might not be... The go-to move, although moving on from Shane Ray as a depth option at outside linebacker, definitely uh, the right way to go, I would say. And then again, at corner, we're still looking pretty good. At safety, we're still looking pretty good. There are players that we could move out to free up that little bit of extra cap space to make this happen and to make these major moves. But before I go ahead and change the team potentially in a drastic way if the majority of these moves go through... I want to know from you guys, is it overkill, should there be a limit, or just, nah, screw it, this team's cursed, do whatever the hell you have to do to try and win, which honestly might not be the worst idea. Uh, so again, it would be targeting Kareem Hunt more than likely, we could switch up the targeting to Christian McCaffrey, if you guys think that would be the better way to go. Uh, wide receiver wise, let me know, Cooper Cup, or do we go for the slightly cheaper option in Godwin, and if we don't end up getting Cup, we could go for Godwin anyway. And we'll probably be looking for a wide receiver in the draft at some point. Uh, tight end wise, is it overkill to get in Jaku? Probably, but holy shit, that tandem would be unreal. Offensive line help, I mean a stopgap in Trent Williams and Jason Kelsey, again, might not be 
the worst way to go, even if it is a tad bit expensive, but protecting a quarterback, it doesn't seem like the worst plan in the world. Then defensive line help with Jonathan Allen in case we move anybody out. Linebacker help, I mean, we're going to look to move on from Shane Ray, so we're going to need some depth there at some point. Uh, but we're pretty much good to go. The big question would be, uh, if we move anybody out, do we then go for a Patrick Peterson, a Desmond King, or a Jordan Lewis? I'd argue if we're going to go for anybody at corner, it should be Peterson or King. Lewis still isn't that bad, but, you know, we have options. That's the point. It's just a matter of how crazy do we want to be with said options. So for now, I'm going to end it here. Uh, we will reconvene in the next episode where we will uh, move forward with this. We'll also go through the draft and we'll get this team set up for season four. Big question as well. Big question as well, on top of the free agent signings, do we keep Josh Allen? We know that there's a quarterback ranked number one. We could make moves to go up and get him. Do we have faith in Josh Allen at this point? Let me know. That's the big question. Let me know what you think of all the possibilities. I thank you guys for watching. I wish there was more uh, simming involved as far as, you know, maybe finding success. That did not happen. That did not happen. That's okay. There's always next year, right? At least we made the playoffs. Looking forward to what you guys think. That'll do it for now. You know the deal. Support the video, support the channel. Check out the description and all the stuff involved there. And until next time, have a good one. Take it easy. Goodbye.